Welcome back guys, it's craft time. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how I made this fun doormat just using a doormat blank, my Cricut, and some freezer paper. Let's go ahead and get started. To start this project, obviously you wanna grab all of your materials. I will list what I used in the description. I just picked up a plain doormat from Walmart. I picked up a roll of freezer paper, and obviously you're going to need your Cricut, whatever machine that you have. And then you want to pick your design. I wish that I could take credit for the um, wording on the mat that I chose where it says, don't stop, be leaving. Love it so much. However, that is an internet find. Um, I just love that <laughs> little saying and quote, so I went ahead and what took it into my design space and created it myself. Um, I just started out by typing out the words and then editing them into the font that I liked. And I am not that great with design space just yet, but I do use canva.com, which you can use their free platform. I also have their pro. This isn't really too much of a plug for them. It's just I use that website all of the time. I <laughs> use it for a lot of different stuff. So I'm really comfortable on there um, with designing things on there, but I also have access to a lot of um, different things. So I went on there to create the little outline that I used on, on my image. And I just imported that into Design Space. So if you don't know how to do that, you go all the way down to Upload. And you can browse and pick your design or whatever picture you have. And you can import that into Design Space. And after you go through, answer all of their questions on what type of image it is, then it, you can ask it to insert the picture. And you can go ahead and create your design. From there, I wanted to make sure all of my sizing was good, everything was centered, make sure it looks great to the eye. And then you can make a little template of the rug by inserting a square, unlocking the height and width, adjusting that to be the actual dimensions of the mat that you're using. For mine, it was a 30 by 18 or an 18 by 30, whichever one comes first. And so I just inserted that in so that I can get a good visual on what it's going to look like whenever it's actually printed out. So I just made it as big as it could possibly be that the machine would allow for my mat to fit and everything to be cut within the lines. And then I began my cut. Now, I'm not sure how other people do this. For me, I did the shiny sign down of the freezer paper. I then took my... Um, straight cutter I cut it down to where it all fit really nicely and then went ahead and proceeded with my cut I didn't mirror it I just cut it straight out because I wanted the shiny side to go down onto the mat from what I saw that's what the best thing that works because then you can use your easy press or iron whatever you have I have an easy press too and that's what I used for it to kind of heat the wax to where it will stay and create a nice cheap stencil for you. So after I've printed it, which it worked really good, um, you can select in your materials. If you type in freezer paper, it's actually on the list. So that's what I did. I just typed in the top corner freezer paper. It pops up. I added that as my material and then I just cut it like with the default settings. It worked really well. There were a few spots that ripped just a little bit, but not completely off to where I couldn't still use the piece. And then I weeded it like you would any other piece, but you want to remember it's a stencil. So you're not taking uh, the background, you're actually taking out the letters because that's what you want to be missing. And just make sure you don't throw away the insert of any of the letters. So like the middle of the B's. You want to keep those to make sure that you have those to inlay so that you can do your stencil correctly. 
After it was done printing, I that's what I did. I, I removed all of the letters, making sure I still kept the middle of so everything. And then I took it off of the mat, which let me go ahead and say with this mat, I, I'm not sure what the exact, um, I think it says R-I-Z-E-E. -E -E. I will link this down in the description in my affiliate links. Um, so this is not a Cricut brand mat. I got all three. Um, I have the light grip, the standard grip, and then a heavy grip. And this worked amazing. Um, I've only used it a couple times so far, but I'm going to go ahead and say that I think this is worth the money. Um, yeah, I I think it's worth you at least checking out um, for the price that I got it at, which at, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but I definitely know. I'm pretty sure I got all three for the price of one if I were to go Cricut brand. And I've wore, used it several times and it's worked like magic. So that's just... That's just my opinion. Again, I am new to Cricut, so don't come for me. I just wanted to share that with you. Again, I will link that down in the description if anybody wants to check it out. But what I was saying is after I weeded it all off the mat and got everything ready, I went ahead and set up my heat press. For the research that I had done, you wanted to set it between 300 and 325, and it's just going to kind of depend on what you feel you need. And then it, I don't think it really matters what you set the timer to because you're only going to be holding it on your project for like five seconds at a time. So you're going to do like five seconds down, move it, move it, move it, move it. Now what I found, so whenever you pull the freezer paper off, it's going to curl up on you. I don't really know that there's anything that you can do about that. So whenever I put it down on my mat, I did my best to kind of make sure that it was centered. Um, I just used a measuring tape and kind of went off of the sides of it. And then I taped down my corners with masking tape and tried to kind of get it together. And I did not go over top of the tape with my easy press. Let me just reiterate, I did not go over top of the tape with my easy press. What I did was kind of go around the corner, just press a little bit here. So the tape's here, a little here and a little here to kind of flatten it out a little bit and give it some grip so that when I pulled that off, it didn't just roll up on me to make it a little bit more easy to handle a little bit more manageable. And then I went over my corners and I just kind of did that throughout, just very patiently, very slowly, take your time because this is the part that's gonna take, I would say probably take the longest next to just painting it, but this is the most important part because you wanna make sure you have a nice stable stencil to go off of so that you get those nice crisp clean lines. So take your time. Press it all down, make sure it's on there. And what I did is I got that settled nice and flat, nice and secure. Um, if you need to move it, you can move it at that point. It's a little easier because it's a lot more stiff. And then just hit it again to kind of um, adhere it back down. And then add in like the middles of the B's, like all the middle, like the A's, you know, of all of the, letter, the letters. And then you can hit those with the heat. And then also you can use like if you have a push pin or a straight um, sewing needle or I had safety pins on hand I was kind of lazy and I didn't go get my box of them so I just used the one that I had or just like held it with my finger but it would definitely be a lot easier for you to use it um, do the middle parts if you have something to kind of hold it in place with you or in that you can actually grab onto to kind of keep it in place and then what you're going to want to use is I used acrylic paint um, I also use a really stiff paintbrush. So this paintbrush has really hard bristles and you want that. I'm pretty sure they make them and they're actual stencil brushes and they have the hard bristles like that. Just go to any of your local craft stores and you should be able to find them. Um, but you want that because of the texture of the rug. You want it to be able to withstand you pushing down multiple times and those bristles staying straight and not breaking off so that it can really send that paint down into the the mat that way it adheres really good and it's not just a thin top layer that if you walk over it's going to just scrape it right off um, before I did start actually before I put my stencil down I apologize I forgot I took a lint roller over it to get all of the extra little pieces that might have come up or have been loosened up um, and got a bunch of that off too which I don't know I suggest you doing it if you don't want to do that part do you 
Um, but yeah, so then from there, I just had a little palette, put my paint on there. I dipped it in the paint and then I would dab it onto that palette a couple times just to get any excess paint off so that it's not big globs going on. And just very patiently went and dabbed all the way around and filled it in. I only did it one time, but I did touch up spots. So if I felt like there wasn't enough paint in one area, I went back over that area. And it turned out really, really great. So when I removed the stencil, off of there, it has beautiful clean lines. It looks really, really good. And I am very, very pleased with it. Um, I did not do anything to seal it. Again, from the research that I saw, it doesn't make that big of a difference. So I didn't worry about doing that. If you know something that I don't, please feel, be happy to share with me. I am always willing to learn and always willing to hear your critiques. Yeah, so let me just take you guys in for a closer look to see how this turned out. Like I said, it definitely takes some patience and it's one of those after you do it, it becomes easier. So I have actually done two mats now and one of them was this first one here. And then the other one had super intricate like detail on it. And I did it because I really wanted to challenge myself and learn and kind of see if I could even pull it off. And that video will be coming shortly, so be on the lookout for that as well. But for now, I'll take you in to have a closer look at this. If you guys have any questions at all, leave them down in the comments. I love to hear from you guys. If you haven't subscribed, please do. We love to have you join the channel and give this video a like. I'll see you next time.